Let's kick things off right now with the leader of the Social Democratic Party, a very sensible man, William Clouston. William, a very good morning to you. Great to be back, thanks. Thank you very much indeed. You know, I was thinking over the weekend as I watched with some uh, trepidation and horror these kind of running street battles, I thought, you know, what we don't need is for me to come on Monday morning and start to take sides. What we don't need is for me to come in and go, well, of course, if the police had done what they were supposed to do last weekend, we wouldn't have seen what we saw this weekend. What I wanted to do was to see somebody like yourself, William, uh, who is very much removed from that kind of twin system, that whole kind of, you know, party political Mm. tribal scenario where you're either an extremist on the right or you're extremist on the left and the kind of arguments people were having with themselves on Twitter was just quite frankly ridiculous so I thought let's talk to William because he will be able to tell us um, why he thinks or whether he thinks even um, that the com- that the political leaders of our times right now are sort of encouraging this kind of behaviour Well some of them have an incentive to stoke it up, I mean certainly the Labour Party has been playing uh, ID politics for years now and that's, mm. in a way that's their base so they, they talk it up uh, it's very divisive, and it's it's of no use to us at all. Right. And the to import to think that importing, uh, you know, U- U.S. style um, hyper racialization of politics into this country uh, is a good idea is such a mistake. I mean, we we luckily we avoided the scourges of uh, fascism and communism uh, in in the 20th century, and 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 we must we must avoid bringing in this this adver- adversarial style of politics which they have in in the states it's, it's absolutely no good at all we just don't need it well we really don't i've watched with with incredible sort of incredulity over the course of the last couple of years the way america has gone and every now and again on social media you see these kind of running battles in the streets between you know the black clad antifa brigade the mm. veterans of american uh, war scenarios and you just, i just think to myself you know i lived in america for 10 years mm. i never saw that there was no that that polarization was not there but we now see it in almost every city of, of America. And, you know, I, what yeah. I don't want is to see that happening here. No, uh, and, there, and there are three things. I mean, as Social Democrats, there are three things that we would advise people to do. Uh, it, it is actually difficult, Mike, to, to, to some extent, in calling it out, you're taking part in it, and it's something mm. we try not to do. But there's three things. First... Stop ra- ra- racialising everything. Yeah. You know, don't the idea, the constant idea that you have to have uh, social justice warriors who would, whose basic aim is to find some sort of disparity. That's the first thing, and then attribute it to racism. Yeah, and then to demand sort of correction. A lot of these people uh, are really quite infantile, and it's very dangerous. So there are one of the things they've got to realise is that in any uh, multi-ethnic, multiracial society, there will be differences. Mm. There really will. Um, and we should the, celebrate those dis, yeah, dis differences, right? Yeah, we should. We should. I mean, some needs to be challenged, but the but the but you know the, there will be differences, and, and and actually getting along with each other. What they forget, and I wish some of the conservatives would understand this as well, is that getting along with each other. Um, requires uh, a concept, an idea, mm. and, the, and the idea is civilised toleration of differences. Yes. You cannot, you, you, you know, that, that's a precondition for a peaceful society. Uh, we will not remain a peaceful society if people constantly radicalise things yeah. and sensationalise things. And I have to say, um, you know, the tragedy in Minneapolis, there's been a lot of opportunism in this, Mike. You know, there's been a huge amount of, of course opportunity. There has. And, you know, <clears throat> my old school, Scarborough College, used to have, a, in the 50s and 60s, used to have 10 school rules. And the 10th school rule was, was any breach of common sense is a breach of the school rules. Really? Yeah. Uh, what and, a great idea. Can we brilliant. bring that back, please? Well, we should. And, <laughs> and you've got to, I mean, both sides. I'm not going to, I mean, you know, there's, there's probably were mistakes made in, in policing and so on, uh, 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 you know. But the idea that if you're a BLM activist on the streets, uh, of London, and that throwing bicycles or bottles at the police is is in the interests of the welfare of black citizens in the states. Get off it! That's right. nonsense. Right. And it's a sheer. Um, I mean, th- these people don't, will not uh, survive any sincerity test. No. Well, also, I mean, we spoke on Friday to Gary McFarlane, uh, mm. who is one of the uh, supposed sort of organisers uh, of, uh, yeah, thank you, of Black Lives Matter. He confessed quite openly and without me asking him to do so, uh, that they want to, de- to deconstruct the police, to have no police yeah. whatsoever in the country, uh, to basically legalise all drugs and to completely tear down the current democratic process of voting. Now, if that is not a dangerous uh, idea to follow and a dangerous kind of, um, 
movement to endorse, I don't know what is. I thought, um, I, I thought that was a great interview because the more we can... Black Lives Matter is a... Ben Cobley did a piece on STP Talk, which is great, and I, I think people should read it. Mm. Black Lives Matter is a great slogan, and it's actually a masterpiece of marketing. Uh, and it, and it, it induces the idea that if you criticise that slogan, you're in some way not interested in the welfare of all people or, or right. black people, yeah. which is nonsense. But people should... Have a look at the program, for heaven's sake. Have a look at the program. Dismantling capitalism, defunding uh, the police, slavery reparations. The worst, uh, one, the worst thing I've read, Mike, uh, in anything that's attached to this, is the rhetoric of disrupting what they call the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Yeah. That's insane. Mm. That any, no, no person could advocate that in America. And 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 on and sincerely believes that's going to help black people or anyone else. No, well, this is it. I mean, and it turns out, as as was revealed by the Times on Saturday, that this guy Gary McFarlane has been a long term member of the Socialist Worker Party. Yeah. You know, which makes an awful lot of sense given what he's now saying, and the fact that he has attached himself to Black Lives Matter proves that he is entirely an opportunist, entirely somebody who would like to use this as a battering ram to break down the system, which is what he's always advocated. But he's never been listened to before. For because nobody cares what the Socialist Worker Party thinks, but people are very interested uh, in those people who want to look after the welfare uh, of what they regard as badly treated members of the ethnic minorities. Yeah, but the, the problem is that it, it's it's what I mean. I, I'd expect radicals to radicalise, you know. Yeah, right. So that's that's sort of not really um, exciting. What I've well, been it's really exciting depressed. when you find out that he's a radical as opposed yeah, to a yeah, campaigner sure. for the issue that you thought he was a campaigner for. No, but BLM in the States is, is completely radicalised. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a revolutionary organisation. It was yeah. dreamt up by, largely by uh, sociologists and university departments. We can talk about that. I mean, you know, we, we, we've said before as a party that far, far too many people are going to university. It's not, it's not socially useful. Uh, they come out radicalised. It's not good. But that's a slightly separate thing. Um, you know, it's in his interest to do that. What what has really astounded me about recent events is the extent to which a lot of uh, BLM claims uh, have not been treated critically. Mm. So they, you get institutions like the Premiership or, or you know, comically, Yorkshire Tea mm. and other, uh, you know... Oh, yeah, we stand other. against racism. OK, great. No, well, we I mean, all do. No, we all you. do and we should. But, 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 don't, but don't take on and start retweeting BLM's uh, propaganda because... Well, it's all, well also, you, I would ask Yorkshire Tea one question. Are you absolutely and utterly happy that if I went to where you grow your tea yeah, in Sri Lanka that I would not find people working in slave-like conditions? Well, you will. You will. And the, that's a point that the, the historian Neil Oliver made the other day about mm. people inanely photographing uh, statue removal and, and desecration of monuments yeah. with, with smartphones that were almost... Yeah. almost Funnily enough, phones. another great interview on this very show. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, I, you know, and, and they, they're taking pictures of smartphones, which, which almost certainly have cobalt in, in the yeah, of by, course they have by, by child slaves in Africa. And again, it's the sheer uh, disingenuous nature of yeah. it. I, you know, as I say, I don't, it's the institutions, it's the weakness of the institutions in saying, actually, that's wrong. No. You know, well, listen, if hypocrisy was their currency, William, they'd all be millionaires. They would, they would. but it's, it's not. I mean, you know, and the Premiership. I mean, you know, uh, again, uh, they're a commercial organisation. Do they want capitalist to be dis capitalism to be dis dismantled? Do they? You know. Well, it would come as a bit of a surprise to the players who are on three hundred fifty thousand pounds a week. That sorry, uh, we're going to go back to actually communist values, yeah. and we're going to yeah. pay you just enough for you to eat and feed your family. So that amounts to about fifty pounds a week. Thanks very yeah. much. Yeah, no, but it's, uh, but it does have. You have to take the Lamborghini back. It's yeah, that'll that'll come as a surprise. <laughs> but it's the da the wider dangers, Mike. It's the wi where does it go? You see, they like a lot of these things. They start off with wonderful words, social justice, and the history. If you look at the history of mankind, a lot of these movements start off utopian slogans, and it ends up. Uh, you know, in this case, it would end up with commissars sticking pencils through people's hair yeah. at school to decide whether they're an oppressor or a victim. It's nonsense. Mm. And it's so dangerous. I mean, if you look at, do some history, read the history of uh, multi-ethnic states uh, throughout the world. They always, the successful ones, always rely on this concept. I'll go back to it. Civilized toleration of differences. You've got to get that. If you don't understand that, you will not have a successful multi-ethnic society. And, and the ones that, where it fails, Mike, it's usually the successful often conspicuously successful minorities that, that suffer. I mean, the, the, you know, racial violence pogroms against uh, Chinese in, in Indochina or, or Malaysia or Indonesia or uh, Asians we've seen in Uganda in the 1970s, and, and worst of all, tragically, uh, Jewish people in Europe. 
this is, you know, if you, if you go for um, highly racialized politics and you're not prepared to accept that some uh, groups will, will, will have different outcomes to others, this is where you're headed. And it's terrifying. Well, it is. But how can we get out of it, though, William? What's your view on how we come out the other side? Because I've always said that what we're interested in here at Talk Radio is solutions, not just highlighting problems. And I wonder whether there will be a sort of a certain, shall, shall we say, lack of focus after a while, because an awful lot of these people have got short attention spans and they love the, the, the punch ups. They love the aggro. But actually, once that all kind of goes away and ceases to be novel, what do they do then and what can we do to make sure it doesn't get worse? I think you need to challenge people that are radicalising things. Uh, you need to try and de-escalate. Yeah. And, and that goes, the, the problem, Mike, that we, and I'm not minimising the task because it's, it's gone into the institutions now. So you look, look at, I'll give you an example from the weekend. The Bishop of Dover mm. does a, a speech down there, I think it was in Canterbury, um, uh, talking about a, a racism pandemic. That's untrue. Well, it's, of course, it's untrue. untrue. Get, and what she should have a look at is get a cop, get, have a look at the British Social Attitudes Survey, and look at the decline uh, in 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 racist attitudes from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and onwards. It's been wonderful. You know, you can't, and it's wrong for her to 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 call, uh, you know, to, to sensationalise in that way. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to call these people out. You know, saying that's just not it's not a true reflection of Britain. It's funny if you if you're in in, in the streets. I did a bit of work in Ghana. Uh, a couple of years ago, and yeah. a lot of the people uh, that I worked with there was on a, a medical charity thing, uh, wanted to come to Britain. They knew that it's one of the most tolerant societies on earth. Yeah, you know, speak speak to speak to uh, um, uh, some of the immigrants on the on the on the streets of Lisbon, yeah. who co in many cases come from Angola and Mozambique. Mm. They also want to come to London because yeah. actually. They know London's a very tolerant place, and it must remain so. So I think you've got to call it out, uh, and people have got to be stronger in that. But, yeah, I, I also think you've got to deal with causes, not symptoms. Mm. I mean, a lot of the very simplistic attitudes, you know, you get a sort of child, uh, childlike view, you know. There's a disparity. It must be because of uh, racism. No, no. Have a look at the ONS data. You, you'll see uh, hierarchies of, 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 say, earnings. You know, you have Chinese at the top. And you'll have uh, Indians, and then you, you know, uh, white, whites possibly, and then Bangladeshis and others uh, in different positions. To say that's all to do with racism is actually, it, at first, it, it's, it doesn't agree with the figures, because it, you can't account for that. But it, you, you, you're making no account of culture, practices, beliefs, and class. I mean, as a, as a political party, the Social Democrats, we talk about class. Class is hugely important. I know Labour don't want to talk about it, but we will.